good day welcome to the module on VLSI testing for the course of advanced VLSI design. So, I am Virinder Singh from uh, Indian Institute of Technology Bombay. I would take you uh, through the various challenges uh, in uh, VLSI testing and uh, the, the, the solutions for that. The outline of this lecture would be uh, some uh, introduction of VLSI test, the VLSI design flow test challenges test economics and, and basics of, of VLSI test. I acknowledge uh, the, the help of or support of uh, Professor Vishwani, Professor Ajit Singh, Professor Fujiwara, Professor Saluja and Professor Samiha uh, who helped me in preparing this course material. So, as uh, Professor Chandodkar mentioned you in the very beginning that, that here uh, VLSI or, or, or chip design has uh, gone through the, the various phases. We, it, uh, if, if I look at the history of uh, microprocessors, it is started from uh, 4004 and now we have uh, dual core or, or, or uh, quad core kind of processors, which are implemented with a nearly billion transistors. And now, uh, as he mentioned in, in his uh, very introductory lecture, that the cost of the design manufacturing of a chip is nowadays more or less governed by the, the, the testing of a chip. He roughly mentioned some figure that it cost you about uh, 200 dollars per hour if you put it on, on, on test to, to test. So, that, that, that means here if, if, if you happen to, to test your, your chip for an hour, you need to, to spend 200 dollars that is huge amount and that may, may not be, be, be feasible for a uh, commodity processor or, or that kind of device to, to spend 200 dollars for, for that. So, na, now, uh, we will I will take you through why the, the this kind of, of cost incur in testing of, of a uh, system chip. As we know that, that here most of the, the chips which are we are fabricating have some kind of fabrication defects. If they have fabrication defect in that case, we have to carefully test the, the each and every device. If it is a, a faulty in that case, we have to reject those devices. If it is fault free, we have to, to, to ship those, those devices and get revenue out of it. Some of the devices are not faulty, but they have some weak faults those are latent faults, those are, are not pronounced at, at the time of manufacturing, but as it works or functions in the, the field, uh, these uh, effects pronounce and then here device will fail after working for few weeks to months. And so, we also want to reject these kind of weak devices and generally the we, we need to take the, these devices through a stress test that is often uh, referred as burn-in test in VLSI test domain. So, if you look at the what kind of, of a defects that may incur in the, the manufacturing process, like the, there are some of the, the, the processing related uh, defects which may incur while you are uh, printing a, uh, your circuit on, on the, the chip. There may be, be like formation of uh, parasitic trans, uh, transistor, there may, may be missing contact window, there may be, be, be oxide um, uh, breakdown. There might be, be some, some defects which are related to, to material like here uh, surface Im, uh, is not clear or some surface impurities are there, there uh, might be crystal imperfection, there are some time dependent failures that may occur, those are not present at the, the, the moment you are fab fabricating, but like dielectric breakdown uh, or, or electro migration uh, mean here when device is, is uh, operating, some metal may migrate due to the, the heat and uh, so that may, may uh, result into a open. And uh, the other dominating effect nowadays coming up is negative bias thermal instability. Whenever a PMOS transistor operates under negative bias, its threshold voltage increases eventually uh, the, uh, the delay of the, the transistor increases, hence your circuit 
uh, operates slower than than it was desired then there there, there are are packaging related uh, uh, failures like here contact degradation and so on and so forth so many of the the, the defects that, that that may occur when you are manufacturing a chip some of the, the defects are also time dependent which are occurring while uh, chip is uh, under operation so now here uh, let's look at how difficult the test process is I guess all of us have gone through some this kind of exercise to to test whether a, a chip is, is is faulty or, or or fault free and what often we do we are, are try to apply all possible in, inputs to a chip and and then try to see where, whether we are getting the the correct output or not like here if I have see the, the this three in, uh, input NAND gate if I want to test it here I need to apply all eight inputs to to the this end gate and I have to check whether uh, the uh, resulting output is correct or not. So, uh, in this case here I need to apply eight inputs if there are n number of inputs then I need to apply 2 raise to the power n input this kind of test is known as functional test. Once I apply this test and figure out the, the, the device is, is correct I, here I do not bother about the, the, the defect that may occur while uh, it is uh, while it was uh, under fabrication though here the time dependent uh, defects might, might still be, be of concern to us. Then it so like here in today's device we may easily have hundreds of inputs when there, 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 there are hundreds of input you may need to apply uh, apply 2 raise to the power 100 input that roughly uh, equal to 10 raise to the power 30 if you apply these inputs by a very fast tester that can operate at 1 gigahertz you may need 10 raise to the power 21 seconds that is roughly about 400 billion century that means here one chip you have fabricated today that would be ready to use after 400 billion centuries which is impractical. So, this tells you the, 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 the difficulty in, uh, uh, in, in the testing. Now, here our aim is to test a chip in reasonable amount of time not in billions of centuries and reasonable amount of time I will come to that point a little bit later reasonable amount of time is few seconds to few minutes um, I due to several reasons I cannot cannot wait for, for several centuries. So, that means here if I want to apply in few seconds to few minutes I can apply only a very small subset of these 2 raise to the power 100 inputs. Now, the, the, the biggest challenge is how to find out that subset of 2 raise to the power 100 inputs that can give me the similar kind of uh, confidence that your, your device is, is defect free or your chip is defect free so that it is ready to, to use. So, now for all the, the high end circuits like uh, uh, why I, I have written high end circuit because for some of the, the, the chips like twice you, you, you even do not need to test. But, uh, because it is it is expensive. So, now the, the, the test time is, is, is few seconds to few minute and every manufactured chip must be, be, be tested. So, that means here we have to, to apply many thousand test patterns for in few minutes to few seconds. So, that, uh, that means here we, we have to choose this pattern carefully so then that, that here this can be applied in reasonable amount of time which is few seconds to few minutes. So, now this has impact on, uh, on, on economics and what that impact is now, now if you, you, you look at the, the, the test cost to apply a test for few minutes that reaches roughly uh, nearly equal to the total manufacturing and and design cost though despite all the, the, the these cost here uh, the still testing we I, I say is imperfect because I can never apply those exhaustive test set. But here is still I want to get the similar confidence which I would have obtained by applying 2 raise to the power 100 test. So, this slide tells you which was uh, given by, by ITRS in 2002 what they speculate is that sometimes in 2013 or 2012 the 
total cost of design and test design and manufacturing of a transistor would be nearly equal to the total test cost of a transistor that is really worry. Now, here that means the, the test has the equal share as design and, and manufacturing uh, in, in, in IC and if it exceeds in that case here the total cost would be dominated by the test that means here we should be careful and we have to have good methodology to test a device so that we can get the, the, the very high confidence and with very minimal cost. So, uh, means here engineering is uh, all about uh, economics always you have to uh, develop a cost effective solution. So, we have to, to, to uh, devise a, a, a methodology uh, or, or so that, that here we can test device in reasonable time and we can get the similar kind of confidence that we would have obtained by applying exhaustively the test. So, the other thing that that, that, that affects the, the economics is like due to the, the, uh, the defects and if the, the sum of the defects are systematic defect that means, there is something wrong with your process you have to set process right and in this exercise your time to market may be delayed and this uh, the, the area under this curve tells you that the, the, the how much revenue you can get. In, in, in the beginning you can get really very high a, a revenue, but here as time passes the, the revenue per product decreases, because now, now you, you have many competitor products in the ma ma market and hence uh, your, your sell reduces and uh, or your market sell reduces and hence you, you, you will have less and less revenue therefore, you have to reduce the cost. So, initially you ca ca can, can sell a device at, at a higher cost. So, now if there is a escalate uh, in, in, in the uh, time to market by few months say here delta t now the, the, the revenue will reduce to this, this one and companies they, they reported that if there is a, a delay by, by 6 months. Uh, in launching a product, the revenue drop may be roughly equal to 30 percent. That is really big number. So, so the companies are, are very aggressive in launching uh, the, the, their product, but they also want to make sure that quality is very good. Otherwise, it is not only the, the, the revenue loss, their image is, is also on stack. So, that, that gives bad impression in the market. And, and hence they, they, they also do not want to do that. So, there is, is al, al, always a trade off. Now, come to, uh, to the, the, the VLSI um, uh, realization process and let us look at where, uh, where exactly it contributes. So, where you, uh, exactly your test appears in the, the, the design flows. You know design flow starts from the customer need and customer have has some kind of vague uh, requirement. He may say that I want to build a microwave controller and in that microwave controller if I put milk in this, this should operate at say 300 watts for 5 minutes. If I want to cook a rice then it should operate at say 250 watts for 15 minutes so and so forth. So, from that customers need the engineer must analyze the, the, the requirement and determine what exactly their requirement is and from that requirement they have to, to, to prepare the uh, specifications. These specifications are most of the, the, the time written in, in hardware description language SDL that may be Verilog or VSDL or system C. And from that SDL often we use the, the, the CAD tools that can synthesize your, your, your design. So, that means here from this specification you write RTL, then RTL you again synthesize uh, as gate level netlist, then you, you do the place and route and finally, you, you, you do the, the, the tap out you produce GDS 2. Right. So, here I want to point out that at every level of synthesis you need to verify whether your, your design 
or or synthesized uh, RTL or, or or gate level netlist is correct in functionality vis a vis specifications that you you have written down. Then once you have ZDS2, you send it to Fab. Fab will fabricate your your circuit and and give it back to you. Now you want to make sure that every device has no manufacturing defect. It is defect free. So only in that case you can sell it to the customer. So now now here after fabrication you have to test each and every chip. Now here as we discussed you cannot apply exhaustive test set to each and every chip. So what you need to do is you need to find out a small test set that can test your chip give you the, the very high confidence in the, the, the manufactured chip that it is defect free. So, for that, that, that here often, so we need to generate the test that process is, is referred as test development. Generally, we need gate level net list for this. So, now here we can uh, start this process before fabrication process. So, test development process is one time process for a, a, a chip design whereas, manufacturing test application is recurring cost you have to, to, to test each and every chip. So, there are couple of definitions we often use in, in, in VLSI, one is the design synthesis that is defined as for a given I O function we need to develop a procedure to manufacture a device using known materials and, and, and processes. The verification is defined as predictive analysis uh, of the design to ensure that that synthesized design when it will be manufactured will perform the given input output function. And test is a manufacturing step that ensures that the physical device manufactured from the synthesized design has no manufacturing defects. Often people confuse between a verification and test. Here just uh, uh, briefly I would like to tell you about the difference between verification and test. Verification is uh, responsible to verify the correctness of the, the, the design. So, that means here whatever design you have made that is correct with respect to the specifications. Now, the verification ensures the, the correctness of manufactured hardware. Test uh, ensures the, the, the uh, correctness of manufactured uh, device. Verification is performed by simulation or I, I guess all of you are familiar with the, the simulation based ver ver verification or big, but simulation is, is much slower process. So, then here often companies do use emulation wherein they emulate uh, the, the design on some reconfigurable platform and try to, to, to exercise many as many vectors as they can and, 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 and try to, to, to ensure the, the, the correctness of the design. And the, the more correct way, way is the formal method, method may be in, uh, in this course and some other lectures will uh, deal with the, the, the formal techniques, how you can use the formal techniques to, to, to verify your, your design. If you look at the test, here it is two step process. One step is to develop the, the test, that means here you want to develop a small test set that can be applied in reasonable time and reasonable time is few seconds to few minutes. And other thing is, is the, 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 the test application. So, test application is recurring. So, that means here you have to test each and every chip. So, that means here these vectors you have to apply on the, the manufactured chip by using automatic test equipment. A verification is performed prior to the manufacturing. So, that means here it is more or less the software process you have very log or, 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 or very uh, VHDL design and you, you want to, to perform uh, the verification on that. Whereas, the, the, the test has two parts, first part is, is a one time process, whereas the second pa part is, a, a, is a, uh, applied to each and every manufactured device. Verification is responsible for quality of design, how good quality design you are, you, you are producing, whereas the test is responsible for the, the quality of the devices that you are manufacturing. So, in this module we will look at uh, the, the, the issues related to test. Now, here uh, first let us look at 
uh, what are the problems with the, the ideal test. Ideal test is supposed to detect all possible de defects that may, may occur during the manufacturing process. Ideal test want that here all functionally good device should be, be passed and all functionally bad device should be rejected. And so, that means here you, uh, you need to test for large number of possible defects and it is really very, very difficult process and uh, defect oriented test is still a open problem. Some of you might work for your research interest to, to, to develop some defect oriented test methodology that may have may advance state of the, the, the art uh, in, in, in test. Then here look at the, 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 the real test. I, ideal test is supposed to detect all possible defect, but here defects may be numerous. So, some of the, the defects I, I listed in the beginning, but now, now here uh, you cannot target all possible defect, but here one thing is very clear all these defects will affect the, the functionality of device in one way or other. So, that means here these defects may occur in terms of, of logical error. So, now here the so you you we need to model the, the impact of that uh, defect as a as an error in uh, at the output of the, the, the circuit and that model is, 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 is referred as the, the, the fault model and now here fault mo mo model may or may not map all real defects sometimes, but here it is capable to, to detect by and large large number of uh, defects. Because uh, you cannot apply or you cannot target all possible defects here because of the, 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 the high design complexity here it is almost impossible to get, get 100 percent coverage for all modeled faults and uh, that is why we, we get the, the, the in, in incomplete coverage and that is another thing which always bothers us always we want that at least we, we should test the chip for all possible modeled faults. Modeled faults are the faults which implicates in terms of, of logical error. So, uh, and now here I will come to the, the, this point a little bit later, but here due to the uh, bad design uh, or test methodology here some of the good chip may be classified as bad chips and hence you are rejecting those chips. This will lead to the yield loss, hence it results in, into the, the, the increase per um, chip cost. And now here the other thing is we are applying very small subset of total test that we need to apply. Hence, here a fraction of, of chips may escape the, the, the test. So, that means here those chips may be classified as good chips though they, they are faulty chips and this will result a, in, into the defect level and, and, and so that, that means here uh, the fraction which fraction of bad chips among the, the, the total chips is, is known as defect level and every company wants to keep this as low as possible. The kind of DPPM people look at is something roughly 100 defective parts per million parts manufactured. Though here again it depends on, on the application where you would like to use your, your chips. So, the, the, the testing is something li li like a filtering process. You have some good chips, some bad chips, then here you want to test these the, the, and good chips should be classified as good chips, but some of the bad chips may also be classified as, as good chips. So, this uh, probability of, of, of classifying bad chip as good chip uh, uh, contributes to, to the, the, the defect level, whereas we want that, that here all the bad chips uh, or defective chips should be classified as bad chips, but some of the, the, the good chips may also fail the, the, the test. I will come to the, the, this point why some of the good chips may, may fail, because here we can no longer apply the functional test, we have to, to work on the structural test and, and the structural test does not care about the functionality. So, some of the vect vectors that can be applied in the, the non-functional mode that can uncover that defect, but that those vectors can never be applied in functional mode, hence that fault may never be, be excited, hence that, 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 that fault will not create any malfunctioning in the chip. So, what we can say is that, that uh, we 
if we classify the, these good chips as, as bad, um, bad chips, we are losing those chips unnecessarily and that, that is, uh, results into yield loss. Now, the uh, so this process is, is something like, like a student's examination and all the, 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 the faculty and, and the students are struggling with the, 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 this problem. So, if I want to, to test how good you people are in learning the, the, the VLSI test, what I need in reality I want to uh, create all possible questions and you, you are uh, supposed to answer all those possible questions, maybe in, in, in 2 months, 3 months, 4 months, but nobody has that much time to, to test. Still here, we want to, to test the students and, and want to award, uh, award the grade. We want to, to say that this student is pass quality student, this student is fail quality students. But by testing 3 hours exams or 1 hour exam. So, that means here in 1 hour or, or 3 hours, you can answer definite number of questions. That is much smaller in comparison to uh, the, the total number of possible questions you, you may have for that, that course. So, now uh, then it is a big uh, problem for the, the, the instructor to, to design a, a small set of questions that can give the similar kind of confidence to the instructor that he would or uh, he or she would have obtained by asking you all possible co questions. So, like for example, in, in a, a um, uh, class, so f uh, there, there are, are uh, say 100 students, 75 uh, percent uh, students are past quality students, 25 percent students are either not sincere or not attending classes or the, 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 this course may not be the priority for that. So, they, they, they are fail quality t students. So, now here ideally I want that, that here I want to, to classify these students as past quality students, these students as fail quality students. I design a questions. In order to, to design a question paper, always every instructor use some kind of error model that these are the often errors students do make and then you have to set a question paper that, that, that can uncover those, those, those errors. So, now the uh, out of the, the, the 75 percent, say the, the, the probability of passing the, the, the exam of, uh, of the say 95 percent. So, that, that means here 95 percent students will do uh, write the right answers, they will pass the exam. Whereas, 5 percent students, they were under stress or they, they might not have read that portion in the previous night and, and hence they are not able to, to answer the questions and then they, they may fail. And this the, the similar lines like here so, uh, out of 25 percent, 95 percent fail quality students will fail, but some of the students may be they might be smart, they, they, they read only those, those, those questions previous night and they, they are able to, to solve the, those questions and they are, they are able to, to solve the uh, exam and, and hence they pass the, ex, the exam. So, out of 75 percent, 70, uh, so uh, 72 percent students will fail by, by the, the simple probabilistic calculation. You, you, you can compute the probability of pass is, is 75, 72 percent and probability of fail is 27 percent. So, that and now, now here this uh, 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 is, is very much concerned to to the, the, the instructor that, that many of the fail quality students are, are passing the, the, the exam and, and they, they, this is much more concerned to the, the, the students that, that here fail, fast quality students are failing the, 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 the exam. So, now, now, now here out of the, the 72 percent students if I look at the contribution the, the, the how many fail, fail quality students are, are, are passing the, the, the exam that you can compute by, by computing the, the, the pro conditional probability of, of uh, students who belongs to the, the, the fail subgroup, but the, then they, they have passed the, 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 the exam. Uh, sorry, the, this is typo, the, this is prob. So, uh, now the, the, the probability uh, can be computed as the um, uh, probability of, uh, of a failing the um, or passing the, the, the exam into the, the total probability of, uh, of the fail quality students divided by, by, by the, the, the total pass 
students and now, now here that comes out to be 1.7 percent. This 1.7 percent is referred as teachers risk because here these are the fail quality students who are passing the exam. You can reduce the teachers risk by making your, your, your question paper more tougher. If you do that in that case here some more uh, pass quality student may, may, may fail. So, then you have to evaluate the, 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 the other uh, risk that uh, compute the, the, the conditional probability of students who belong to, to pass class and then, then they, they, they have failed and that comes out to be 13 percent. So, that means here this is the risk of students by, by having the, the harder exam. So, now here we need to have the um, a trade off between the, 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 the teachers risk and, and, and the students risk. The things are very similar in, in, in VLSI uh, test wherein uh, the, the teachers risk is corresponds to, to the consumers risk because they are likely to get bad parts and uh, students risk is corresponding to, to the, the foundry risk or, or, or uh, companies uh, uh, corporate risk. So, uh, now, now here you have to have trade off. There is little difference because in um, examination we give some benefit of doubt like here if students are, are uh, solving more or less uh, large number of problems correctly then we, 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 we tell them a pass quality student. But in VLSI test it uh, means chip has to pass all the test. It, it is not li like the if it, it passes the 80 percent uh, test it is classified as, as, as good test. So, so now, now here that is little difference between the, 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 the student examination and VLSI test. So, now here look at the, the, the what role VLSI testing plays. It help plays a role in, detect, uh, in detection of faults. It also plays a role in diagnosing the fault what kind of fault has occurred and if the fault uh, uh, occurs multiple times uh, or, or in, in multiple uh, shifts then it is of concern and hence we have to look at why that fault is occurring uh, often and that is known as failure mode analysis. So, test also helps you in um, diagnosing and, and doing the failure mode analysis, ana analysis that what went wrong in the process while you were manufacturing the chip. So, that you are getting many chips faulty and you have to set the, the, the process right. So, now the, the, the question comes how well must we test a chip? Uh, so, uh, the it has direct relationship with the, the, the test cost and the, the quality of, of test because ideally we want that, that, that here quality should be as good as the exhaustive test is. Now, here let us look at how well we must test a chip. Let us say we, we have a, a system that has roughly say 100 chips those means the, the, these are reality now, nowadays you, you have you have systems with more than 100 chips as well and say now uh, means what kind of defect level uh, you, you can can uh, accept say one system out of 100 i, I assume i can accept as a, as a defective so that means if it is defective i can send back to to the the uh, the company and then company may, may re replace that though the cost is involved in that. If it is so then what uh, so that that means if a system is defect free if all parts are defect free. So, that means here if I say the if I can accept 1 percent uh, systems as defective that means here one chip out of out of 10,000 can be defective that results into like 100 defective uh, parts or chips per million chips that we are we are producing that means here if we if i i accept the the, the 1% defect rate here my defective parts per million requirement is roughly 100 so for almost all the the, the commercial chips 100 dppm defective parts per million is uh, admissible whereas for some of the applications like more automotive applications they do not want any any defective parts. So, 
they 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 ask for zero defect zero defect is is almost impossible to 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 get but here the 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 dppm must be very very low that must be very very close to zero because nobody except a chip that goes in in braking system of a car and you say that that, that there is a definite possibility that that the, the, this chip will fail and and, and uh, so nobody wants to buy that the, that kind of car so hence they are they have very strict requirement for the the uh, quality of the the chips so here uh, let's assume i produce 2 million uh, chips and my manufacturing yield is 50% that means here 50% chips are are good 50% chips are bad which is very close to the the, the to today's uh, manufactured chip the, the the though here based on the the, the immature or mature process quality uh, varies so uh, the yield may may go as high as 80% 85% that may go as low as 20% so uh, now here say i have reasonably good yield 50% so that means one may, one million chips are good which we are we want to save another million million chips are bad which you want to to uh, reject now here out of out of 1 b billion uh, 1 million bad chip if i i, I say that that my dppm is is 100 that, that that means here 100 bad chips may be shipped so that means here 999900 uh, chips must be, be must be detected as bad out 10 may, may go unnoticed so now here if if i look at the the, the test coverage the, this should be be 99.99% that's the kind of requirement we have if we have 100 dppm requirement this goes further high if the dppm requirement is is more than uh, the uh, or sorry less than the the, the 100 or if uh, the dppm requirement is is relaxed you, it can be uh, further uh, in, enhanced now so if you say that that 100 dppm in that case a chip with with, with the 100 ics may have 100 percent failure 1.1 percent failure probability chip with 100 parts may be 1.1 percent chip with 100 i 500 ics they, they, this can may have 500 5 percent failure probability now here for like automotive industry i say they are they are targeting for zero defect but they, they they really look for less than 10 defective parts per million parts so uh, now here look at the, the 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 yield model why we have 50 percent or, or or 70 percent yield that comes from the manufacturing defect and the defects may be the uh, the gross or, or 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 area defect that that we may have that may be a systematic defect of the the, the process or that that may be a, a random de, de defect so uh, mature proce uh, well controlled process die yield is is mostly uh, limited by by the the random spot de defect it's not by by the systematic e e defect that may appear due to the uh, systematic process de de defect or or the the um, material defect but here now, now the the uh, the elimination of random defect is uh, almost impossible. So if I look at the, the the chip, say here this chip has many of the the, the dies. Some of the the dies are defective. Some of the dies are are are, are good dies. So these dies are 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 the the, the defective dies. These die, the white dies are the, the the good dies. And now now here say in this chip. If I say say I have ten defects out of out of twenty two two dies, and these de defects are randomly distributed all through the, the the area. In that case, here these ten defects may spoil ten different dies, and this, so uh, we have to reject those those, those dies. So this yield model can be be um, captured by by, by a simple Fosun's mo model. That, that gives you the the the, the die yield is a, a portion process and that that is e raised to the power minus lambda where lambda is the average number of defects that may occur per die and that number of defects is equal to the defect density and die area defect density is 
uh, somewhere between 0.2 to 1 per centimeter square. If you look at the, the, the manufactured device uh, right from 60s or, 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 or 70s, this defect density stays more or less same. Uh, so, that, that means here if you have bigger area then you are likely to have more defects and you are likely. So, if the, the, these are pure randomly distributed you are likely to spoil more number of chips and if I say look at the pure random distribution assuming that the, 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 there are 0.5 defects per square centimeter and die area is, is say roughly 2 square centimeter. That means, here the, the uh, diff number of uh, the average number of defects would be equal to 1 and hence the, 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 the yield would be 37 percent. It looks too pessimistic. So, that means, here 37 percent dies are good, uh, 30 per, uh, means uh, remaining dies are, are bad and you have to throw the, the, those dies. Though here in reality uh, the uh, portions model does not uh, capture the, the, the clustering phenomena in the, the, the defects. So, all the, the defects are really not identically distributed everywhere. So, uh, or uniformly distributed uh, everywhere they are they are clustered and then the clustering density depends on process to, to process. Now, here you can, can figure out the, 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 the clustering density of a process and based on that, that here you can compute the yield, but here definitely the, the, when the, the defects are clustered they, they will spoil less number of, of uh, uh, dyes hence the, the yield would, would be higher. So, now here if you look at the like we were talking about 99.99 percent coverage and now here we, we are say ok with 100 dppm. So, defective parts per million that so that means here 100 defect parts per million may escape the, the test. Hence, now here the assume you have million parts and your yield is 100 percent in that case here 0.1 million parts are so 1 lakh parts are good those we are shipping but here the the, the 9 lakhs or 0.9 million parts are bad and uh, so that means here out of 0.9 million the the 90 uh, parts may escape the, the, the test so now here 90 parts may escape the the, 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 the test that means here the total uh, dppm will go as high as, as, as 900. So, this gives you the correlation between the, the, the your, your uh, fault coverage, your yield and dppm. Uh, so, uh, that, that, that means here you need very high fault coverage for the, the, the this if you want to bring down the dppm. Assume that another process is ma matured and you have 90 percent yield out of that. So, from that so, like here 9 uh, lakhs parts are good they are saved and 1, one lakh parts are, are bad. So, that means here they may have only 10 test escapes. So, 10 test, test escapes will give you only uh, 11 uh, defective parts per million parts that that is pretty low. So, that, that, that means here what it, it tells us is the biggest uh, challenge uh, is for the, the, the complex systems uh, and which have low yield. If you have high yield, you are really not very much worried about the, the test coverage, even the, the lower coverage may give you the, the, the very low dppm. Whereas, so that, so it is the, the uh, low yield uh, dies which are of big uh, concern. Other thing is uh, it is um, uh, because of the, the, the complexity is very difficult to achieve very high coverage. This uh, and defective parts per million this is not linearly increasing with the complexity. Complexity means the number of, of gates that you have, but it, it uh, increases non linearly uh, with the, the, the complexity that is another concern. So, now here if you, if you look at the, the, the manufacturing defect that may comes from the, the, the flaw in the, 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 the defects, flaw in the process. Now, the variability is again be, uh, becoming increasingly important as the, the variability is, is more in, in, the, in terms of channel length or uh, 
say of, of the gate, gate here, the its stress, uh, its its uh, speed varies with that, and hence some of the, the the devices may not have logical fault, but they may have timing faults. So these faults are are uh, either a permanent fault or hard faults, or some of the the, the faults are are also transient because the the, the devices are are becoming weak and weak and and hence like if some environment radiation is strikes on on the, the that device the, it may produce a glitch and that glitch may may, may continue to stay in the, the system and that gives you the wrong output so th those are the, the kind of transient faults we have now if you look at the the, the, the test now you have a, a produced circuit then you, you want to apply couple of, of inputs or, or patterns that you have developed during your, your test development procedure. So, the, the, this is a small set of, of factors what you will do you using a very expensive tester you apply the, the, the test you, you collect the, the, the test response and then, then that, that response should be, be compared with the final uh, with the golden res response that you obtain through the, the, the simulation and if, if there is a match you say the, the, the te device is good and, and you, you ship it if it, it fails then you have to, to reject that device. So, for means in order to apply the, 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 the test here we, we use some expensive de devices like here advantage uh, uh, this ATE is one of the, the, them and these are, are, are really expensive devices. So, now, now here if you look at the various costs involved with the with the, the, this process, those costs are, are like design cost that we have, the, this yields to the, the uh, means like here uh, mean all the, the chips are not very uh, suitable uh, or to, to, to design uh, to develop a very compact test set if they are not then then we have to have uh, augmentation in the design and that that augmentation comes in terms of extra area that, that, that we need if the area increases again here yield decreases and then with the augmentation of design it come, uh, comes with the performance penalty as well so that the, the, that's the, the the design effort that we need to put and uh, so the, 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 this comes as recurring cost Another co cost of course, I, 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 I explained you earlier is the, the, the test development cost that is purely the software process. So, you have to, to, to develop a, a small test set and then you have to, 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 to buy a expensive um, uh, test equipment that is capable to uh, apply the, the test, collect the test response, compare the, the, the golden response with the golden reference and give you the flag whether it is it is a good chip or bad chip. So, uh, like here the, the, this slide tells you that, that, that here say if the, the, the output produced by, by this logical block A comes through the, the goes through the, the logical block B that is not easy to, to observe. So, what you can do is you can have one a, a additional uh, bus that, that, that can take output from the, 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 this logical uh, block A. And, and, and you, you can, can, can simply see the, the, the observe the output from here, which was otherwise very difficult to, to, to observe through the, the logical block P. And hence here, the, the, this is the, the additional cost that, that is uh, typically referred as design for testability. I will I'll come to this point, what are the, the other design for testability techniques we have. The other uh, cost is, is the, the, the manufacturing uh, test. So, the say here you buy a very expensive uh, a, a, a test equipment that may may operate say at, at 1 gigahertz the, the, these data are, are, are um, pretty old may be uh, 10 years old. So, you buy a, a one uh, instrument uh, the, the, the te tester that I, I have shown you earlier say it has 1024 uh, pins and say the, the, the base chassis cost is, is 1.2 million and then 3000 dollar per, per uh, pin I it, it cost me then it is roughly about 4 million dollars it cost. Now, here when you, you operate the, the this and say that, that, that I 
will continue to operate this tester for next 5 years. After that anyway this tester would be too slow and it would be obsolete. So, now, now I, I have to depreciate the, 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 this over 5 years and say that there is 5 percent depreciation. So, now, now here the, the uh, sorry 20 percent depreciation. So, about about a million uh, dollar 0.85 million dollar uh, is the, the, the depreciation cost per year. Then the maintenance cost may be, be say the, the, the 2 percent cost is the maintenance of the, the equipment and then some operational cost like here main power and uh, the or like AC cost and, and a building cost and all these things. So, now here if, if you divide the, the, this cost per year then it is something like here 1.4 million dollar per year. If you distribute the, 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 this per second in that case here, this comes out to be roughly 4.5 cents per second. Uh, if, if you operate this 24 hours a day, 7 days in a week. So, now, now here assume that, 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 that roughly it cost you 5 cents per second. This is just the, 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 the test equipment cost. And now here if you say you, you, you want to test your, your, your device for a minute say the, the, this cost is roughly 5 cents then it cost you about 3 dollars per minute. If you test it, it uh, if you test your chip for an hour it co co cost you about 180 dollars per hour. That is what professor uh, Chandodkar uh, mentioned you earlier that it cost you about 200 dollars per hour. So, these are the, 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 the major uh, costs Th those are in uh, involved in, in, in that. So, that, that makes it, it, it uh, a difficult process. Now, one more thing at the end I would like to, to mention in the, the, the test challenges that like when you, you, you manufacture a device you want. So, couple of uh, based on, on the, the yield couple of devices are good, couple of devices are bad. So, out of the, 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 the devices which are good couple of devices are weak devices, they are, they, they are likely to fail in initial couple of months. Like here for example, if you have very weak contact or, or very weak line so and, and now here when the chip operates then, then due to electro migration that, that, that line may become completely open up after a while and hence that chip will fail. So, this phase is known as infant mortality and that happens in, in, in first few weeks. And after that, the, that a device operates fairly well for uh, next uh, couple of years. And after that, the, that here aging is sta uh, starts to, to appear in the picture and due to the, the various aging effects, NBTI is one of the, the dominant effect nowadays. And the, then here device starts to fail to, to, to operate at the, the, the the uh, rated frequency or, or it, it may, may completely fa fail. So, now uh, the, the we have we need to, to care two more things. First thing is we have to weed out the, 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 the all the bad parts uh, just after manufacturing, but then during the testing we also have to make sure that these weak devices should also fail. So, the, the, that here they may not fail. Uh, in, in, in the field uh, just after uh, they, they start to operate. So, now for that you need to, to provide some accelerated condition so that these devices may see that kind of aging effect right after the, the manufacturing and hence these. So, we need we generally test these devices at, at accelerated voltage, accelerated temperature. So, uh, the, the temperature is something li li like here about uh, say 125 to 130 degree centigrade, whereas the, the, the um, uh, temp uh, means uh, voltage roughly we, we raise to, to 40 to 50 percent uh, of the, the, the nominal VDD that we have. So, the, these are the, the, the uh, means infant mortality, we should uh, make sure that this happens right after the, the, the manufacturing. Other thing is so, after that, 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 that here whatever devices which pa passes the test they, they will work fairly well for a couple of years and then here we have to have some mechanism to detect 
the, 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 the fault if it occurs while it is in, in the, the manufacturing, if the, the, the lifetime that we are looking for is, is, is long enough like for the, the space applications you cannot replace device every year. So, so they, 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 they have to have life span of 50, 15 to 20 years. So, so that, 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 that means here you have to have some mechanism that may, may detect the, 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 the defect that may occur and then, the, then you, you can test that. So, now uh, means conclusion here I uh, try to, to motivate you why VLSI design uh, is uh, VLSI test is very important in the VLSI design flow, why you need to, to study the, uh, this topic as well with the advanced VLSI uh, design course and what are the various challenges. Uh, we face for the, the VLSI test and at what level we need to take care of uh, various uh, issues. With this I summarize my this lecture, uh, have a good day, we will meet again with the, the next lecture, wherein we will discuss about the various test uh, fault models, test techniques. So, goodbye. Thank you very much.